think I threw some the 98s Kamada. in there, too. Kamada. Do you want the A-Cam the a -cam one? Um, I mean, that's just more of the same if we want to see. It's a different shape. It's got the toes and stuff. But... Do you want to see that, right? Yeah. Can we do the one that says ACOM on the top, please? Okay. Uh, just going to go ahead and open this file here. All right. And would you like to mill the top, or you want me to uh, do the bottom? So Yeah, the bottom, so the inverse of it. Yeah, like that. Okay. All right. And um, so let's make sure the dimensions here. So I need to basically scale it here. Because I was in uh, millimeter units, they probably, when you exported it from your system, it's exporting in millimeters. So we just need to um, bring it in into uh, inch units. So we can do a scale. And then I'll choose where I want to place my origin. And then would you like me to mirror this part as well? Yes, please. Okay. We'll do a mirror on the X and Z plane. Make a copy. It mirrors it out. And then we want to flip one of these parts over. Okay, so we got these two parts ready in here. Now the goal okay. is to mill the inside of these, is that correct? Yeah, and can, so are we able to drag and uh, nest them a little differently than that? You see how they're kind of wide um, to the right of the screen yeah. from so each other? Yeah, so you pick the part, you can actually do this, rotate it, right? Right. Okay. If you want to drag it, you can also drag it. You can, if you want to use this um, manipulator, you can do that, or you can also do freeform drag and drop as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Okay. How about leveling to the table? So I mean, if it's a three axis, I'm sure you could. So, that, yeah, here would be the other thing. We get files uh, from clinics all over the country, and sometimes they don't have the uh, the bottom of the foot um, leveled parallel to, to the scanner. So the heel might be an inch higher or farther away from, from uh, if we just plated it up on, on the CNC table, the inch might be, or the heel might be an inch up compared to where the toes are or down closer. Can we level that? Is, yeah, is so you'd have to easy. use the tools for rotation in here. So if you if you pick one of these, you can rotate them as well. You can use the rotate commands to rotate it. There's okay. a transformation command, so you can use the tools in the CAD to do that. Yeah. All right, well, that's easy enough. Okay. I could even do that. So the workflow would be very similar. You define your stock in here, and you know I can ignore the stock height as you see, or I can just override it to inch and a half, and then I can specify the length and the width here. So I can go for like 14 by maybe uh, 10 or 12, and just go ahead and align it, and then set the zero to the top. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then we basically uh, establish, uh, you know, for the toolpath, I can select these two and do a silhouette command. So go to curve, silhouette, pick these two. So that'll create the outline for us. So these, these functions that you're going through, though, we can put in a knowledge base part? And not so the CAD not. functions, not the silhouette and the creation of these uh, like the rotating, moving, and you know those things cannot be there. What what is in the knowledge base is the machining operations. So if I go ahead and load the knowledge base with the rule, you'll notice that it automatically picked those geometries for machining for us. Okay. So that's what the knowledge base can automate for you. Okay. So we still need that. Mm, yeah. I mean, we're always going to need. Anyway. Yeah. 
So in this step, it's basically creating a toolpath inside this. Now, there's different types of 3D toolpaths, but this one is called 3D offset pocketing. There's a 3D projection pocketing operation as well. So in this case, um, it's going to uh, work like a pocket and then you know project it here. So if you go to 3D uh, projection pocketing, so this works slightly differently, which basically maintains a constant 2D offset and project the toolpath to the model. You can see when you have steeper sections, it's going to, you know, cause these, uh, you know, riding up and down on these areas in the case of a projection pocketing. So the 3D offset pocketing or the parallel finishing might be a good option for you uh, to consider for these parts. What, what's it called? Uh, the, oh, the, the one I generated here is called the parallel finishing, and this one is the offset pocketing, as you see here. This is the constant 3D step over uh, where it starts. You can start from the inside and work its way towards the outside. This is called a 3D offset pocketing. And that's what it's going to do in the form that we get. That works. Hmm. So that's milling the inside. Now, if you do need to do like a roughing operation before you do the finishing, uh, you could do a roughing pass. So you can see I used the same knowledge base that we did for the other half or the other side of the part. Mm. Okay. Yeah, see the edges on the side of the STL oh, yeah, file, yeah. the ridges like that, that's why I Yeah, if it. you wanted to... Um, so this uh, is the... Uh, so we need to set the... Because the other one was cutting off the bottom, this would need to cut the top off. It, but, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter, but if we needed to do that, we could just lower that thing. Yeah, no. so it doesn't... Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, when it's an inverse, and it cuts the bottom off because the foam box that we're, or whatever, the cast, then it's going to cut some of the arch away and the, you know, we, it's just the opposite. We and one of the things you could possibly do is you can cap this, so it just forms like a cavity in here. So if you use, mm -hmm. uh, like, a surface, you can say you want to do a plane from curves. I can pick these three in here. So it basically puts a plane, you can see right there. Mm -hmm. And now, if I generate this toolpath in here, it's going to, the toolpath is going to stay right up to this edge. So that way you get a nice clean edge in here, you're not going to see those variations on it. Okay. So those are some tools you can use here. Basically, I'm uh, putting a plane and then using the silhouette curves as I have here as um, like a hole or a cavity in there. Mm -hmm. It's just like somebody punched it. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So there's uh, these tools available in the CAD which will help you or in your machining process. Now I could do the same either with this or even with this operation, the parallel finishing. So now if I run a simulation, uh, let's wait for this to complete, the 3D offset pocketing, and I'll show the simulation of the two. So these just aren't going to be a problem. Yeah, no. Because it's not going to go black either. Nope. And it gives us more capability than what we have now. Yeah. By far. Any questions while this toolpad is being generated here? No, no, I don't have any. It's okay. It's going and there's the 3D need. offset pocketing, and you can see that it it comes out nice and clean all the way to the top because we put in like a like a planar surface. We capped it. Yep. And you can see it's uh, walking up the wall right there. So occasionally we get some kind of 
dirty FTL files, how easy is it to clean them up with this software? Okay, well, uh, if you need to clean up your mesh models, uh, we have a, a plugin called uh, Visual Cam Mesh, and you would need that to do it. Now, in this case, in this particular example, you're seeing that the bottom is hollow because the stock I put in was thickness was less than the actual part extent. So let me go back and just fix the stock in here, and then I'll answer your question about how to fix the model. So let me go back and change the stock right there, and let me rerun the simulation. <clears throat> 